Hello minders. Welcome back to the Mind Watercolor. Well, I just felt today like doing a sky. Uh, not just any sky, but a stormy sky. And I thought, okay, what would make a stormy sky interesting to paint? And I've got the Stonehenge Aqua cold press. And this is 300 pounds. Now, if you saw my recent video on lifting and scrubbing, you saw that uh, Stonehenge, when it comes to masking, lifting and scrubbing, it pills easily, it lifts easily, and it doesn't handle ma <laughs> mask very well. If you have Stonehenge, don't write it off. Uh, it might be useful for other things. It's all about characteristics and what you're trying to achieve. If you're not going to use mask, well, there's one problem out of the way. If you're not going to do a lot of layering and glazing, then that's also not a problem. I found Stonehenge a uh, really pretty delightful paper to paint on uh, in all other respects. All of that aside, we're going to paint a sky on 300 pound paper. That's so I don't, I can use a lot of really wet washers and I don't have to stretch it. And we're going to use one color, sort of. I am going to use Schmincke Super Granulating Deep Sea Violet. Now, when I say one color, sort of, they usually include two pigments and uh, they tend to separate as they granulate, which is kind of cool. So in reality, I've got two colors here, but I'm painting with one. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. This is just going to be a fun time of putting down some really wet washes and seeing what I can achieve with paint and water. And since I'm using the one color, we're going to put it in this plate. It's a little ceramic plate I got at Target. All right, I'm going to start by wetting the sky down to that horizon line. I've got my paper almost flat. If you were doing this at home, you might want to put it totally flat. I am very lightly. I am not pushing at all on this brush. I want to get this saturated. Now, 300 pound paper should stay wetter longer allow me to do a lot of soft painting wet in wet all right i've got a pretty even sheen going here so let's get some color on there and all you have to do is just kind of make some cloud-like swirls leave some open areas though because it's going to spread all right let's do some spraying And even kind of encourage that running a bit. Look at the separation. The blue separating out. You can see some of the uh, browner part of the pigments. I really didn't honestly expect that to separate out to such a blue pigment. Well, that's all right. We'll go with it. And of course, uh, keep in mind, it's going to dry a lot lighter. If you want it deep, get it nice and deep. Now you can come back with another layer. I want to see uh, with the tissue here if I can get some lighter features up there. Now you don't have to use super granulating paint. If you want to try this, um, I'm just doing for the fun of seeing the granulation and the separation of the two colors. I've done skies like this with just Payne's Gray and nothing else, and they've turned out great. It's just great to play uh, with this. All right, as Bob Ross would say, let's have some fun. I'm just going to take some of this pure, fresh, out of the tube pigment. It's, it's not hardened. And I'm just going to try to, these are going to be silhouetted kind of distant lines anyway and just put in some expressive marks. So I'm over here getting, well, I really do look like Bob Ross, don't I? Get a little roll of paint on the edge of your palette knife. And come across, get that little roll of paint right down to the edge of the knife. Yeah, well, this is gonna work a little differently. I'm, I'm taking and scraping not scraping, but I'm I'm dragging a line 
out vertically. These are going to be distant tree lines. I don't know, hill features maybe. I'm going to take the short side of this, kind of make some vertical. I promise I'm not trying to <laughs> paint this like Bob Ross. I just thought this would be an interesting experiment. What you don't want to do like Bob Ross is just get globs and globs of paint. So I'm going to do some light spraying. And I am wanting it to not really run, but kind of spider and vein its way down. See that? That's what I'm looking for. It's going to be kind of an expressive painting. So this is up here started to dry a bit. Well, I'm getting some interesting results up here. If not, maybe a little, little unexpected. What I'm going to do is uh, just try some things. Um, I'm going to use this again, but as a spatter. Uh, it's at the point now that it will back run. All right, it's in a state now where I can't really do much more. It's damp, it needs to dry thoroughly. And then I will see if I can put some more distinct shapes up here. It's just looking a little bit like a mess right now. So we're going to let it have a total thorough dry. All right, we're back. Everything is dry. <laughs> well, folks, this is what you call a big super granulating mess. Okay. And you know, sometimes experiments turn out that way. What we're going to do is see if it's salvageable. Uh, if not, we'll do it over some other way. So what I'm going to do first is go ahead and silhouette this area here. Just go ahead and get it painted. And that'll kind of help me see what I need to do up here. I'm, I'm liking this foreground. I like the little uh, palette knife things. And I think what I just need to do is paint this darker and give myself some more distinct hill and tree lines here. But uh, maybe I can salvage this, you know? I like to try before uh, I toss something. I consider something like this a study. And so an experiment. So why can't part of the experiment be, how do I fix it? Can I fix it? Even if it's uh, something that I can't use or don't like afterwards, do it. I mean, make fixing something part of your study. Listen, folks, I've had plenty of paintings fail over the years. I've had plenty of disappointments. You're going to have them. There's one point to all of this, and that is to learn. You don't learn anything without having problems and doing problem solving. All right, so what are we going to do up here? Well, let's see. Let's do some gentle lifting. Without all that wet, wet paper... I just want to see if I can unify some of these washes a little bit uh, without making it look overworked. I'm very, very lightly just loosening up some of that paint. And it loosens up pretty easily, both because this paper does that and because there's a lot of pigment on the paper. I wonder if the glazing, blending and glazing brush will help me here. That paint really does lift very easily on this paper, especially when I'm using a stiff brush like this. But look how easily that lifted. All right, so the blending and glazing brushes are too stiff. This paint just lifts and moves so easily. Um, but basically, because they are so stiff, uh, it's just pushing these edges around. And I'm afraid I'm going to destroy the paper. So what I'm going to try is my softest brushes. And that is undoubtedly the silver black velvets. I got these big ones. I've laid my paper back completely flat. And I'm going to flood this area with water and just loosen it all up. And see if I can just move it around a little bit. Everything is on the table, by the way, now. If I need to bring in a different color that's not super granulating, I'm going to do that. If I need to even bring in some gouache to help smooth out this, I may do that. I'm saving those options for last. Well, let's see what flooding this with water does.
I'm wanting to get rid of some of those big dark spots and edges that we're not smoothing out. Now I'm going to block real easily and see if any of this comes up. Little bits. Well, what happens, because I've got it laying flat, if I put back some of that deep sea color, it's kind of nice there, because where I picked up with some tissue, uh, it dried it out and it created a bit of hard edge. So, all right, well, um, I had some successes and just spotty places with sort of re-rendering these clouds, but overall, I'm not happy with the way it's going, so we're going to try yet something else. All right, so this is totally dry now. Since this paper is lifting so easily, I want to see how much of this will lift, and then maybe I can redo the clouds almost from scratch. So let's see how that works. And rather than spray it, I'm going to lightly paint some water on here. And I'm just going to keep uh, lightly brushing it, loosen up as much of that pigment as possible. just damp now and and in a drying state what I think I want to do I thought about bringing in another color that won't separate and super granulate but I think I want to stick with this uh, deep sea violet I'm just gonna get a scrap piece of paper dampen it a little bit grit my teeth and do this One of the problems was just that I had it on an angle and this, uh, in a real wet situation and I kept spraying it and adding water, uh, you're promoting not only the running down, but the separation of those two pigments in a super granulating color. Okay. I've got a pattern fairly well established here. Um, it's just trying to make it look billowy now. Let's go ahead and just let this dry and we'll see where we are afterwards. All right, this is dry now. Not bad, not bad. Um, I'm not totally satisfied yet. Anyway, so what are we gonna do? Um, I'm wanting to add some distinct lines. I have so much soft, loose, washy stuff going on. So I'm increasing the scale of some of these little tree areas and trying to add some very distinct linear details just something for your eye to go to so what i'm going to do now i think is find the edges and this is uh, an enhancement this is something i do with trees and spontaneous paintings a lot i need to stay softer but for instance you've got a nice contrast area here so we're going to come in here and make that a little bit more distinct Well, okay, this is uh, turning out better than I had even hoped. Well, that's not true. Originally, I hoped for a lot more. <laughs> After the mess, this has turned out better than I hoped. All right, everyone. Well, here's the final with the tape removed. Okay, you know, not bad. It could have been a lot worse. <laughs>
Oh yeah, it's a terrible thing to say about a painting, but seriously, uh, not necessarily ruined. There's still a lot more I could do if I wanted to get out the gouache or the colored pencil. I'm actually itching to try the, the colored pencil. So you're telling me there's a chance. I have another video, if you haven't seen it, where I do a cloudscape with a colored pencil over watercolor. So if you haven't seen that, I'll put a link to it down below and you can go look. But this would be a great candidate for that. You could go in there and do all kind of stuff with those clouds. Not the video I intended to make, but maybe it's useful for you. Maybe you'll pull out something that you thought about throwing away, but hmm, you might be able to do something with. <laughs> Thanks again for watching, everyone. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, patrons, for your monetary support of this channel. I couldn't be doing this without you, and we'll see everybody in the next video.